Hi, welcome to Shop as Toyota, Battery 101. We are going to show you how to extend the life of your forklift battery, the how, where, when, and why of battery care. There are many different ways to water a battery. As primitive as grabbing a gallon jug and pouring manually into each cell, time consuming and very inaccurate. Guns. These guns fill each individual cell connected to a water hose, much more efficient. If you only have one or two lifts, you might consider a gravity-fed tank, but if you have more than one or two lifts, the tank only holds five gallons of water, and I'd recommend something like a watering cart that holds 20 gallons, or the most efficient way to water your battery is through the use of a watering system. This is an 18-cell single-point watering system. A coupling point here to the direct fill link, which is hooked to a garden hose. We depress the handle. A wheel begins to spin. Each of the injectors is filling each cell. As each cell fills, it moves on to the next cell. This unique system has got a viewing window that allows you to take a very quick glance over the top of the battery to determine if a cell is low or not. This is a very efficient way to water your battery and can be done in a minute and a half when regularly watering the batteries. If we do opt for a watering system, there are several things to consider. All battery manufacturers do not require the same injector. In fact, the same battery manufacturer, depending on the size of the battery, will require a different injector. As you can see, the various types of injectors that go into the various batteries. It is crucial that you have the correct injector when it comes to watering the battery. Be sure and consult your motive power professional in your area before installing a single point watering system. You may have heard that you must have distilled water to put in your battery. There was a time when distilled water was the preferred method of watering the battery because water treatment plants didn't do a very good job of removing the elements that contaminated the interior of the battery. The word today is, if you can drink the water, you can put the water in your battery. But if you have any questions, consult your local motor power company. This little device is called a blinky light. The blinky light is a water monitor, and the blinky light is designed to indicate when our water level gets low. This blinky light only looks at one cell, but it gives you an indication as to the water level in that cell. We would always recommend that you keep an eye out for the, all of the cells, but this is a good indicator, especially if you're a reach truck, an order picker, or a stand-up counterbalance truck, where you cannot easily see the top of your battery. In the how portion of this video, we wanna make sure that you understand how important it is to have one person in charge of watering the battery. If you have more than one unit and people are assigned to that unit on multiple shifts, it's very difficult for someone to take responsibility. Put someone in charge. If everyone's in charge of watering the battery, no one's in charge of watering the battery. This is a manual gun. It hooks to a water hose and it greatly expedites the watering of the battery. One word of caution, this has to be adjusted to each individual battery. As battery sizes and manufacturers change, so changes the setting on this gun. So if you choose to use a manned gun, it's critical that you have a uniform battery fleet or someone who is capable of adjusting per battery and its height. Now let's visit the where to water our battery. Traditionally speaking, most batteries are watered very near the charging area. The purpose for this is we want to water our battery as soon as it is fully charged as we can. We do not want to discharge the battery before we add water. One of the most important things is we never water a battery unless it is completely and fully charged. In this area, we're going to have protective personal equipment. We're going to have goggle, face shield, gloves, apron, and an eye wash station. This eye wash station can be as sophisticated as a shower and an eye wash. It can be as simple as something that is hanging on the wall that is OSHA approved for battery operation. Since we are in a charging area, it's important to point out how the charger can affect the water level in your battery. It is important that the amperage of the charger match the amperage of the battery. 
Today, many of our sophisticated chargers are going to be able to compensate depending on what the amperage of the battery is. It could be 500, it could be 1,000, and the charger is able to make that determination. If, on the other hand, you have a charger that is too big or a charger that is too small, this can dramatically affect how it consumes water. It will heat the battery, it will boil the water, so please make sure your battery matches the amper hour capacity of the charger. One of the greatest improvements in our industry has been the technology of uh, how we charge a battery. In days gone by, the older chargers were very specific to the size of the battery. This technology up here is ancient to say the least. Very large, very bulky, and very specific. This was a 48 volt charger, 750 amp hour. That's all it could be used for. If you tried to charge a 1,000 amp hour battery with it or a 500 amp hour battery with it, you were out of luck. Next generation chargers became more sophisticated and better to charge your battery with. But they were still specific to voltage. As we've moved into today's chargers, we have reduced the size of the charger and we have allowed them to capture more than one voltage and much more amperage range without causing damage to the battery. We're often asked, when should I water my battery? The one thing I can tell you in stone is you only water the battery when it is completely charged. That is the when to water a battery. How often or frequent we water our battery depends entirely on your utility or your application. Some facilities water weekly, some bi-weekly, some even more often than weekly. It is up to you to determine how often the batteries need to be watered. If we water our battery at the wrong time, or if we water them incorrectly, we are going to have an overflow, which we're going to show you a picture of a battery and what not to do when it comes to when should I water my battery. Even though this battery is equipped with a watering system, it was still clearly watered improperly. Whether the fault of an improper charger or watering during the wrong time, this battery now has its acid outside rather than inside the cell. It is the gasoline driving the voltage. Without the acid, we'll have a battery with very limited runtime. This is an example of how to overwater a battery even though we've used a watering system. The watering system does not guarantee that the water will be proper. It is still up to you to water during the proper time using the proper charger and you must wash your batteries at least once a year. The dirt and the corrosion will not only diminish runtime, but also will have a negative effect on the electrical components on the forklift. We now come to the why portion, do we water a battery? Inside each cell are two liquid components. Inside each cell are also plates or tubes on a flooded lead acid battery. They both require a proportional amount of water and sulfuric acid. That is called our electrolyte. As long as they are in balance, our battery performs as it should. When our electrolyte gets out of balance, our runtime is greatly diminished. So water is as important to a battery as it is to a person. We must keep the battery hydrated, but we do not want to overhydrate the battery. The correct amount of water in a uh, flooded lead acid battery is a quarter inch above the MOS shield. When you look down inside the battery and see a perforated shield, that is our MOS shield. If we overwater the battery, then we have the battery acid on our battery and our forklift. So it is very important that we water the battery in proportion with our acid. How do we know when battery service is required? Industrial forklift batteries are rated at six hours of discharge. Obviously, we have an eight-hour shift, we have lunches, we have breaks, but our forklift battery should operate our lift for six hours. If we notice diminished runtime, that is the first sign that we need to have the battery checked out. This could be something as simple as a sulfated cell, and if caught early, this cell can be repaired, restored, and not have to be replaced. So if we notice a diminished runtime, that is our first indicator that we need to have a battery professional come out and look at the battery. What is the life expectancy of an industrial flooded lead acid battery? While most manufacturers have a five-year warranty on the battery, it is not uncommon to have one last six, seven, eight, nine, even as many as 12 years. 
I've also seen batteries fail within three years. It comes down to PMs, proper watering, and proper charging. That is the key to the life of this product. Take care of the battery, the battery will take care of you. Shoppers will have available for you a best practices of battery do's and don'ts in English and Spanish, but if you have any questions or concerns, please contact your local Toyota dealer. Thank you. Let's shop as Toyota give your battery a lift.